By the way, hello, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That's Dan. Hey. Welcome to the studio, Chris Olson. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Uh, by the way, today's interview being delivered to you by GoPuff. I love GoPuff. They're my favorite. Do you use GoPuff? Yes. Are you lying? Yes. What the fuck? <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what, what kind yeah, of. Yeah, but why don't you use it? <laughs> um, I Well, I just haven't yet, but I'm very excited to dive into it right after this. Well, lucky for you, you can use code ZAC10 when you're checking out and you'll save $10 off your first two orders. Can Home you believe that? I mean, it's a lucky day. <laughs> that, I'm so excited. And you didn't need to bring me coffee. I didn't also fuck you you have a coffee brand and you didn't bring me dick i, I it's right outside you're lying um, <laughs> like, you didn't I bring just, me flight fuel i i you came had, all the way here well i'm i was hoping we're gonna see each other more than just today okay so there could be more than that <laughs> we've seen each other more than once this is, this second is our time. second time, so uh, so where we're very were you there as well no i don't leave my house very often okay right Got it. <laughs> Where'd you guys That's meet the first time? Uh, Harry Styles. Harry Styles. You were uh, at Harry Ween. Yeah. Oh, you were at the Daddy concert. Oh yeah, yes. yeah. I watched the. I watched that historic moment go down. That was pretty crazy. Yes. We weren't close. I didn't. We didn't. I didn't meet you until after the show, though. No. Um, yeah, you were like a different. I mean, I was changed. You were one Chris Olsen pre <laughs> that yeah. Harry Ween, and then you were a totally different human being. After that, and you were Danny Phantom. I was. The same Halloween season that James Charles was Danny Phantom. I'm so sorry. He was? Yeah. Does that ruin the costume a little bit? <laughs> no, I actually, I, I actually had no idea Ooh. that he was. Fuck. Did he go blonde for it? No, I mean, we can, uh, you know, somewhere on the screen we'll show pictures. Show of a picture. Because I was full platinum blonde for it. No, so you did. You did it. I want to say I was pretty dedicated. The back of my costume wouldn't zip up, though, because I got it a few sizes too small. I was wearing a dance belt and everything, but I think. Yeah, I'm just was, glad most of the daddy stuff was from here up. Was that strategic, you getting a smaller costume? No, 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 no. no. Sometimes, of course, I would make a strategic move like that. That, though, mm. was not. Got it. Um, I was, it was just like you can't really try those things on when you're ordering it online. Mm. But you know what you can order online is absolutely anything from GoPuff. <laughs> you can get it delivered instantly to your door. Zach 10 when you're checking out, literally whatever you need, they have it available. You should uh, really add flight fuel to that. You know? I would love to actually. That you should would be, start using them. That yeah. would be so great. Yeah, I will start using it and we'll get flight fuel on I mean, GoPuff. I mean, you get things delivered, right? You're too famous to go to the grocery store. I am absolutely not. <laughs> I, would, I go to the grocery store once a week. <laughs> You're about to say day? Yeah. You go daily? Like, no, I, I You want fresh don't. deli meat? I definitely I, I don't. I'm not too much of a cook. What's your favorite lunch meat? My favorite lunch meat? Yeah, do you have one? Uh, like roasted chicken or something like that. Oh, wow, that's high flute and that's pretty classy. Yeah, like I'm not really, I'm not really throwing it, throwing down some like ham or turkey <laughs> in no a salami sub or something like that. I, I, I fuck with some salami. My dad and I used to go to Subway. We would walk to a Subway sandwiches mm. growing up, huh. um, and I would, I think I would usually get like a salami and cheese sandwich. That's it. That's. I was a child. I mean, tasty. Not much has changed, but yeah, I would get salami cheese and then eventually I added mayo to it. And that's about it. <laughs> what, what, what does your dad think of what you do today? Like, do you, I mean, obviously your family's in your TikToks. I see your grandma, right? Yes, you do. But do you explain to them the daddy poster thing? Well, my, I didn't explain that to my dad. There's not too much of a conversation to be had with him for that. It's like, hey, dad, I'm going to hold up a daddy sign. It's not for you, though. Um, and, it's, and it's not something that you should be thinking about when other times I'm using that word. You may but, be thinking I'm trying to get in touch, but I'm not. No, but I'm not. But he ended up holding up. Uh, I went home for Thanksgiving or, or Christmas or something later uh, that month that month it must have been thanksgiving and when i saw him at the airport he was holding up a sun question mark sign you're telling me you that's not planned that wasn't planned horse hockey no 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 like i'm i swear to god i knock on you're not supposed to knock on wood in those moments that was not planned i did not tell he said when i landed he was like i have a surprise when you land so uh if you can i will say i saw him and then I, I realized I was like, oh, I, sh I should have like planned uh, something better to make a video out of this. So after I saw him, then I made the first part of the video where I say my dad said he had a surprise for me. Um, so I'm going to go find him now. So that had I had already seen, seen him it. with the sign, Got but it. he did tell me he had a surprise. And I did not know that he was going to put that together because we hadn't even talked about the daddy moment. And it's not something I'm really I was really planning on like bringing up to him. No, but it actually made it everywhere. It did. And he does check my TikTok. He doesn't have one, but he'll Google 
Chris Olson TikTok and <laughs> watch my videos online. That's really adorable. Yeah, yeah. In between like his meetings, uh, he's a lawyer, so I don't oh, really wow. know what else he. I don't really know what he talks about, but he, uh, in between meetings, he'll look at my TikTok. He talks about the law. He talks about the law, and um, and that's that's it. Was I the, guess was the daddy poster planned? Yeah, I mean, we well, know. what part of it? I mean, there was something to you. I did not know that they were going to put me on the Jumbotron or uh, that I was going to have a moment like that. I had been at Harry Styles. That was my fourth show. I feel very privileged to be able to go that many times. But that was my fourth show. And I, I figured this is probably going to be my last. I don't want to keep going so many times. Now I have planned I'm going to go one more time. But um, I already knew that every time I go, audience members tend to spot me and they'll like take a photo and I usually end up on TikTok the next day. So I was like, for my last one, people bring signs and there's a moment in the show where he looks at signs. Let me like bring a sign. And so I drove to Michael's and I got their last poster board and a, a few markers. Then my friend Shri, actually, I started drawing it and my, I was, it was horrible. Like it was way too big and it was already falling off the page. So my friend Shri, who was there with me, she's in all of the videos. If, if you happen to see them, um, wrote it for me and I was like this is good this will be fine I'm sure it'll be good I held it up um when I first walked in and people like screamed and it was a lovely moment I thought that was probably going to be it because I was holding it up mid-show too and a girl behind me was like put your fucking sign down I was like <laughs> okay <laughs> it's down and so then I was like okay it's done like that I, I'm not going to try to keep getting this moment and so if you see at the start of the video I'm literally holding it like under my chin mm -hmm. because I'm like I'm not going to try to hold it up and get yelled at again I got my moment it's whatever. But that was one of the times that the guy, the camera guy ended up showing me while he was talking to another girl. So once I knew I was on for a second, I was like, now I, I'm going to hold it up. This, this is time. So that was as planned as it went. And then the conversation we actually had, I, I it's like out of body experience. I, I didn't expect any of that to happen. So you, parallel to your career, you help the careers of others. Is that fair? I try occasionally. <laughs> I mean, I feel like, you, like you, you have a decent consultancy thing going on here that's a little secret in, in uh, on the back burner. I think people think it's a lot more official than it actually is. No, I think it's totally not official, but like, I mean, yeah, there's a yeah. thousand holes in it. People are able to find you. 100%. Like, I, it, if, if people reach out and are like, can you help me with my TikTok? I'm almost always like, yeah, I'm so down because it's fun for me. I genuinely have a really good time um, helping other people with content and like, F figuring out content for us to do together but um there there are definitely times that i'm like truly just hanging out with someone and maybe we make a video together and someone's like oh uh, he's on contract now or something like that it's a little less serious than people think it is but it is also a big part of my life and i really enjoyed being able to do that too i think it's like something i i i find joy through doing and it's not just something that i'm like this is my job as being a consultant for TikTok and making other people as famous as they can be. Though that is something that I seem to enjoy doing at the same time. Do you look at that as, I, I mean, do you look, have you had the conversation with yourself where you look at all these different avenues that you've created for yourself since the pandemic and go, which one deserves my, f like how do I divvy up my focus and my I, energy? I have a hard time doing that because I have a very addictive personality. So my answer is all of them is like, I need to be the best at, ev at like each one I do not be the best as in better than anyone, but I need to be the best personally. I need to find my full potential with each Avenue I go down. And that can frequently lead me to uh, ha like having a breakdown once a month or something like that. And being like, I'm not good at any of them. Like I, I I've pushed myself too far with every single thing that, that I've done. And then I regroup and I'm like, okay, no, there are certain things I, I just need to like be uh, more vigilant with what I'm giving my energy to at each thing. But I think it, I think I, I have found importance in being able to do multiple things at once because I don't want to just try to remain relevant personally forever and be my own personality on TikTok and always have to share myself in that way. I think finding other ventures where I'm not consistently um, 
pouring my soul out, which is not, I mean, I mean, that's such an, a dramatic visual and it's not that all the time, but trying to find other ventures where I'm not consistently having to share myself in this very vulnerable way, I think has been important to me, whether that's helping other people or like going down a different business venture or being behind the scenes on things. I think finding all of these different ways to feel like I'm being productive and working has been important to me. Is it hard to share yourself as deeply as you do? Some, sometimes yes. Honestly, I think most of the time, no, my, I did share recently on, on social media that like I had a pretty crazy rehab experience, um, where they really tore you apart. Their whole premise was like, we are going to break you down to build you back up. And so like your first assignment there was talking about your 10 most shameful secrets. And if you weren't like crying, or like shaking by the end, they had you do them again until you were because they were like, you're not getting vulnerable enough. Um, What'd you share? <laughs> I, I actually can't remember the exact things that I share. There's a lot that was blocked out. I do remember though, one of my things was um, that I'm a people pleaser. So I had to go around the room and tell each person what I didn't like about them um, or like how I, yeah, I think it was essentially what I didn't like about them. And if it was a light surface level thing, they made me go deeper. And so I would have to be like, I don't like how you like uh, you. I, I actually, again, another thing that I've blocked out is the actual things that I said, but I, I wanted to stop halfway through and they wouldn't end group until I went around to each person and told them a thing I didn't like about them. Um, and I was like sobbing by the end of it. And then they end and then, then it's, then group ends and there's no like aftercare of like, okay, you did it and we're proud of you. The therapist is like, okay, get out. Like you kept group late now. And so after going through those things, sh sharing myself at a vulnerable level on TikTok feels like light work in a way. It feels like something I can connect to people and really help them. And it doesn't seem to take as much out of me. And maybe that's because I've poured so much of myself out back in the day. But I, I, I think, um, I now see it as more helpful than something that's really hard for me to get through. So that helps you share, but like, I'm interested, like looking at somebody and having to really insult them to their core. What does that in unlock in you? Are you afraid of confrontation? Do you, are you intimidated by I it? I still am. You, yeah. What, what were you going to say? Do you share your, your honest critiques on somebody easily? No, that didn't help me to, that didn't help me get to a level of feeling like now I can just tell people why I don't like them. If anything, a lot of the things that happen there put me so far on a level of having to want to, of trying to be good, trying to be right and trying to correct myself so unbelievably often that for the first few years after I lived at such a high level of anxiety that I was just inherently a bad person because that's kind of what they made you believe in a way is that like these things live in you and you need to get them out um, or you're going to keep going down this path that you were on. Do you believe that? not as much anymore but there are days that i like where i i feel yeah like i feel like i'm not doing enough or that i think that's where what comes into my uh i need to always be doing a lot of a lot, always be uh the best at all of the things that i'm doing is because maybe somewhere deep in a core value i feel like i'm not good at any of the things down to being a core, a, a human is I'm always worried that I'm, I'm not supporting people enough. I'm not being the best friend or, um, I'm not, uh, just, just being, being right. It'd be it, like being a good person in a way. Um, which I think a lot of that unfortunately came from this treatment center, which changed my life and got me sober, but it also made me feel, um, like I will consistently be making up for the way I was for two years of my life for the rest of my life that's a hard uh, that's like a really heavy bag to carry it totally is but isn't a part of treatment making amends yes and i think that my lighthearted answer in so many um in interviews where it's like you know how like how do you feel now is that like one of the things you do in treatment is while you can't make up for the past you can always try to positively affect people in the future and I think I, I'm, I try to do that at such a level that I'm like, I never know when it's really, when I'm, I, I never know when it's really going to be enough, when I'll really feel like I've made up for 
how I was in the past or, or feeling like, um, I've, I, I, my, my family is proud of me. That's one of the things that I think I'm consistently, I feel myself consistently looking for is someone to tell me that they're proud in a way, which is, <laughs> I've never actually like really said that. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm just consistently working to try to, I don't know how we ended up just getting, <laughs> getting so deep in a way. We were just talking about treatment, um, but it is a very deep subject. But you carry this, uh, there's something to nobody telling you that they're proud of you, but you should be proud of you. Yeah. But there's nothing like somebody else saying it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, I do feel like I try to give that to myself pretty often. But you should be proud of yourself for a bunch of reasons. You should be proud of yourself because you made it through rehab. You should be proud of yourself because you remain sober. You yeah. should be proud of yourself that you made a career through the pandemic. You should be proud of yourself that you remain relevant far after the pandemic and have the ability to remain relevant for as long as you want to remain relevant. You should be proud of yourself that you built a career helping other people be relevant. There's so many reasons that you should be proud of yourself. Right. And it's it's crazy because you started that out with you should be proud of yourself for even finishing treatment. Oh my God, yeah. And I feel like I I feel like um, the ability for me to give myself credit for the things that I'm pushing through is like so low. And that's what I try to build up so frequently. Um, but it's, it's, it is, it's, as you said, it's totally hard to give yourself that credit in that way. Um, and even if, even if hundreds of other people do, when you have a core belief about yourself, changing that takes a really long time. And so I feel like that's kind of a life journey that I'm currently on is like, changing those core beliefs um, of myself that were kind of developed in this time of trying to better myself at the same time. There was it's this huge paradox of changing my life for the, for the better and then also burying these core feelings about myself even deeper. And now I don't have a substance that ever takes me away from them. I, I, and and I, I see this with peace and love. Like, can you make the case a little bit like the TikTok algorithm, especially early on was a lot about consistency. Yeah. Are you, can, can you make the case that you replace some of your addictive behaviors with posting consistently on the internet? A thousand percent. I, I think, um, I, I have, I, I realized I, since I got sober, there were different addictions that popped up like, uh, you know, each year I feel like like the you know the first one I was really into fitness and there was probably like some disordered eating in there and I was like this is exactly like if I just stay to this regimen I'll be okay and then it became male validation and I was like I just need people to think I'm attractive and I just need to if I consistently get that type of validation then I'll be okay and then TikTok happened and I was like now I need to stay consistent with that and I was always trying to find this um consistency to help me stay afloat or stay above feeling those deep feelings that were about to come out that, that I was starting to feel about feeling just needing someone to say they're proud or something like that. And I feel like over the past year, since I went through a breakup for the first time I've, I've started sitting more in, in the feelings and, um, not trying to replace consistently, uh, with with something that's going to just help me uh help distract me from all of my feelings um and and not try to stay so regimented and stay on an on an exact thing so i cannot fall apart and i've, I've always tried to hold myself together through filling my schedule and thinking okay the days that i'm not actually full am i going to be okay am i going to break down um and trying to move forward in that way i feel like for the first time recently i've started experiencing that there's a lot of freedom that comes with that and a lot of anxiety that comes with that because I still frequently freak out and feel like I'm on the verge of everything falling apart. Oh yeah. Being alone with you is the scariest fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for so long when I was doing social media, I was in a relationship doing it. So there was someone who could directly relate to so many of the things that I was going through. And since that ended, so many other things have happened that I don't always have a person who knows exactly what's going on. Um, right next to me. So I have to sit through it on my own a lot. Is that hard? Yes. Yes. And no, I love being alone a good amount of the time. I think I've, I found a lot of comfort in myself, but 
there are a lot of moments when, um, like I, I was just, just being in, in Paris a few weeks ago for fashion week, which should be this really amazing, crazy feeling. And I'm so grateful that I went, um, there was a huge sense of loneliness while I was there. Mm. And I was kind of wishing that someone had, I, I, I was able to just be there with someone. Totally. Um, what are special moments experienced alone? And it, and, and then I feel really bad for being there and feeling lonely while I'm there. And I'm like, and, and that's where this like self hatred can then come in because I'm like, I, that's where that core, core feeling of being bad, because I'm like, I am living this experience that I should be so unbelievably grateful for, which I am. And yet I'm sad because I'm lonely. And then I'm like, and then this really toxic, um, uh, self like this, this really t a toxic cycle of self-talk then comes in where I'm just, uh, consistently getting angry at myself for feeling my feelings and not letting them move and, and just feeling like, I can't believe you're in this situation because if someone else were in it, they would be grateful for what's going on and how dare you feel this way and all of these things. And I just, I hear my own brain is like a comment section on my own feelings yeah, but it's okay to feel lonely even when you're in a crowded place experiencing cool shit because I think, I don't know, if, if you didn't feel lonely in those moments, then maybe you wouldn't strive to find somebody to experience it all with. Yeah, which is, I think that's exactly what I would tell any of my friends. I'm, I'm really good at giving friendship advice of course. and, and like giving and talking to people and helping build them up and those and, who can't do teach. Right, right. Which you know, I want to be able to hear myself as well. And, um, so I, I guess it's, it's just, it's always going to be a push and a pull, but I, I, uh, I do feel like there, there, there are definitely, there's a lot of periods of loneliness in this business in general, and you'll hear so many people talk about it. Um, no matter what level you're at in this entertainment industry, people I feel like who are the most successful ever talk about loneliness all the time. And so I, I try to be a, have more sympathy for myself for that, but it's hard when you're just consistently listening to your own thoughts and not always soundboarding them. Have you had to process why you out of all the people who posted on oh. social media during that time, outside of the fact that like, yes, you were tapping into the algorithmic gods and you had a beautiful gay relationship <laughs> and you shared everything and you know, yeah. you're not that ugly. Oh, thank um, you. No, you're, not that ugly. <laughs> you're gorgeous. <laughs> You know, you made it a lot easier, you know? Um, yeah. And you really, everything was just firing on all cylinders. Outside of that, have you asked yourself why? I don't think, I, I think, I don't know. It, it all happened in such a vacuum and so quickly that there wasn't even time to really, I, I think, I think when I ask myself why, I can almost answer it. And it's like, because I was posting so consistently of this other person and people started liking that. And so I knew to lean into it. And every time people have shown me what they like from me, I try to lean into it and, and give the people what they want in a way. And so I feel like, um, it's, it's, there's not, there's, there's not too much of the question of like why and, um, and, and in, in the sense of like, why is this happening to me? Because I don't deserve it. It's kind of like, why and then that analytical side of my brain comes into my head where it's like why and how do I cons c try to keep this going in a way mm. and what's the way to like continue holding on to uh, what what I've built because TikTok has such a short life it's it's so different than some of the other like forms of media and you can you you we have people who have blown up on TikTok and been the hugest thing for like two months and we don't hear from them again and so I think I'm just consistently trying to find out more of like the how than the why does that still take the place of an addiction occasionally yes and what's funny is it depends on who I talk to I'll talk to my trainer who's like this really beefy straight guy and he's into crypto. And I'm like, I'm, I'm always like, I'm just, I'm, I'm always so nervous about how to keep this going and, and push forward and like, uh, try to make good content. And he's like, well, that's a good feeling. You want to keep, stay motivated in that way. He's, he's the kind of guy who will post like motivational quotes on his Instagram. Like we know the person, <laughs> I love him. Um, but he's like, yeah, you want to keep that, keep that fire under your ass. Then I tell my therapist this and she's like, that's unsustainable. And like you will, you, you will, consi you'll consistently just break down at who you are. If you're consistently feeling like, um, you're never at a level where you can, 
be proud of yourself. Yeah, your, your identity is attached to a fleeting algorithm. Yeah, absolutely. And I don't feel like I don't feel like that's encapsulated my entire life. I'm there's so many moments when I'm I, I I'm able to be present for most of my life, but when I feel myself get sucked into that, it's like I become like my I I it's there's there's like something different going on in my head. Like I it's it's almost it's it's like what happens with addiction where you don't even want to drink or you don't even want to do that drug that night, but your body is just like, well, we have to. So this is what's happening. And so there were times in social media working through TikTok where I was like, I don't know what I want to post today or I don't Why do I want to keep pushing this forward in this way? And then my brain is kind of like, well, because you have to like, w do you feel like you deserve this rest in a way? Why would you deserve this rest? Why would you deserve um, to uh, take a step back in a way. And I've, I've now tried to find that those pockets where I'm like, I deserve it because everyone deserves a rest or, mm -hmm. or you don't, you don't, I, sh I shouldn't be thinking of this with that addictive mindset because that's a losing game. Totally. Well, taking this rest, create balance and balance creates a better product, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think in connecting with so many of my friends who don't, who, who aren't, I, 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 I try so hard to really understand the non-addict mind because I know the way my mind works is so unbelievably attached to things and I get so um, engulfed in exactly what I'm what, what my task is at hand that when I see people who are not like that I try to understand so much to be able to implement that in my own life and when I see people who are able to post and feel good about themselves and think like I'm, I'm really proud of the things that I've been able to do and they don't feel this like incessant need to keep going because it's all going to fall apart and they don't have that scarcity mindset. I'm like, well, how can I implement that into my life and not feel like I'm um, consistently working towards a goal that doesn't exist? Yeah, but you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anybody else. You should be managing what you have. Yes, which I think I think I do. I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think I compare myself to try to um, be like them in a way that, uh, is unattainable to me. I think I'm, I think I'm trying to more like find the inspiration of feel like, okay, you guys seem to handle this really well. I would love to be able to handle that in this way. But you really are the company you keep. Like my yeah. friends who have been around me for 13 years, 14 years, like I've learned from them and I still continue to learn from them. And I am definitely parts of them. Like, uh, and as yes. I achieve new things in my life and encounter new things that I've seen them encounter or whatever, I, I mean, I am really very much a collection of my closest friends. Yeah. I think, I think I, I I'm a hundred percent that. Cause there are, there are people who will also t tell me that I like motivate them to post that they mm -hmm. feel so on it when, when we're together and that they feel like they, they just want to do that next thing. And I'm like, I love being able to inspire people in that way while also knowing that sometimes that's the dangerous thing inside my head because I'm doing that out of um, fear in a way and not out of love. And so many actions in our lives are just out of either fear or love. And But if I'm able to inspire someone to do that out of love, that's great because I want to be able to do that as well. And so, but being able to be around people who are on the other side of that, then we balance each other out in a way, Yeah, I think. And you also can't shit where you eat everywhere. So no. you need to have friends that you don't work with. I have, and which is, is very many of my friends. I, I still connect. I, I'm still connected to so many of my friends who knew me pre-college or during college. Like there's a lot of kids from Berkeley this. who have ended up out here. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is great. Like there's, uh, there's a lot of people who not only did I know them in college, but are now also working in the same industry that uh, that i am so we're all kind of like going through this together by the way chris also went to a famous uh college like music college school thing right berkeley's huge and i did i did but like they're more famous for the people who didn't graduate than graduated they don't and i did graduate so i technically Ooh, yeah you gotta go, actually, yeah man. i have to go so i, I didn't fucking wasn't know that somebody should have fucking told me yeah i did graduate but it's true at berkeley um if you are like successful enough you didn't you didn't actually go the whole thing what? You, well, you're successful enough. What are you, what are you about to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. If you're successful enough, you're supposed to drop out. Yeah. Because then that shows, like, because music <laughs> is such a young industry, too, that they're like, if you were able to drop out because you were doing well, like, you ate. We should have scrolling on the screen a list of all the people who dropped out early because it's actually really long. Like, just yeah. off the top of my head, John Mayer, Charlie Poo. Yes. Yes. Uh, well, what's to say about your musical talent then? Um, it's bad, I guess. <laughs> it's just very, it's like down it's the really, drain. It's exclusive to the bathrooms. Yes. Exclusive <laughs> to my bathtub specifically. 
Um, what, Would you go on tour? Are you going to recreate a bath, like uh, like a bathroom or something? I have thought about that. I did text my, I, I did text Shree, who sings in the bathtub with me all the time, that Hi, like, Shree. if we ever do a, a show together, we can, st- we should start in a bathtub. Oh yeah, I think that's just, how duh. fun would that be? But it, I, my musical talents are definitely not my top talent. So it kind of makes sense that I maybe graduated uh, from there <laughs> for musical theater. Though I do hope to do that one day, but. Um, you could easily. I would love. I would love for that to happen. Um, and I do, I actually think I, that's where the hopes high expectations low is that like, I, I do have a lot of hope that it will happen at some point. Um, and when I don't have an expectation of over that, uh, but yeah, my, my musical theater talents were never my strongest. I never felt like I was going to make it. I always felt like I wasn't good enough. Um, so the fact that all of this kind of happened in a different way is very fascinating to me, but I, I, I think it all makes sense the way it all happened. Do you want your partner to be sober? No, I think that doesn't really matter to me. I don't love someone who's maybe sloppy. Like mm. I, I think when I've, when I've connected with people um, for the most part, they usually actually, I, I've never really dated someone who seems to have like s- problems with substance. I think that would be very hard for me because that's just kind of an enabling relationship in a way. And I never want to control someone. And so being able to be connected with people who are, are, are able to use these things normally. I feel like I'm, I'm not too, I, because it's been five years and I was really only heavily using alcohol and drugs from 17 to 19. So I was like a teenager. It was two years of my life. And now I've spent more time not doing that than doing that. I don't have too much of a hard time of like being around it mm. as long as it's not um, like problematic use. How do you find it. fun? During the daytime, like I, I, I think a lot of my friends know that like after we go out to dinner, if they're all going out, then I'm like, eh, good night. Like I, I, I usually go home. I like watch a movie. I, I spend time with myself or like friends will come over and we'll, we'll do that. Like I'm the friend to have a chill night with, mm. but I also try to have my moments where I go out and have fun. Like on Halloween, I went to this like big little gay party um, in New York, which I, before I went. And it was, this was like at a warehouse, thousands of gays around. But before I went, I was sitting on the floor of my bathroom and I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I know a lot of people are going to be on drugs. What kind of fun am I supposed to have here? But I was going with a really good group of friends who I had gone out with before. And I was like, if you don't go, you're not even giving yourself the chance to have fun. I mean, you, sure, you'll have a pretty relative time here. But if you if you don't go, there's not even the chance to, to, to have a good time or a better time than you would have here. And so I ended up going and I ended up having a good time. And doing those things and consistently going through the actions of it proves to myself, um, I, I, I gather the proof that I do have fun when I do these things. Not saying I need to go out all the time. And sometimes I do feel like I miss out on that classic early mid twenties experience of like having crazy nights at clubs. But I also know if that existed for me or if I tried attempted doing that, it wouldn't be something that would be sustainable at all. Totally. That would probably be like dead at this point if I had continued doing all of those things that I was doing, because by the time I was in treatment at 19, they were already telling me that like my liver was failing and I was 19. So I can't imagine by 25 that I am now, what would be happening? Can't be good. No, you wouldn't be here. Yeah, no, I you don't. Wouldn't be here. I don't think. I. I mean, I think that's why, like this, the twenty seven club exists in a way, is because at those, at this age, your body eventually is unable to handle the stuff that we consistently put it through. Totally. Yeah. I, the most respect, but also going out and like finding fun in those moments is. It should. You should be proud of yourself. You know. Yeah, I and I am. I think. Uh, it's, it's very interesting because a lot of people will come up to me and they're like, I could never, like, how do you do that? Mm. And I think it's been such a normal part of my life for so long that I don't feel like it's this mystified thing of like, this is my first time going out. It's like, no, I've, I've done this before. And, and I, everyone else, you could, even if you're saying like, I could never, you just, you just are unwilling to try and that's okay. If you don't have a problem with this stuff, you don't need to try. But I think, um, it's, it's become so mystified because drinking or doing anything is so normalized, which is okay. Again, I'm, I'm not here to shame a single person for what they did because I went through it at such a high level. Who am I to shame that? But um, it's become such a normalized thing that people can't even envision that that would be something that they would put themselves through. But it's, it's really not uh, that out of body of an experience. You're just feeling the way you normally do, but you happen to be around a lot of other people. 
I understand that. Which is okay. Like it's, it's, it, I, I've, I've had a, I've had an okay experience and I always wake up feeling totally fine the next day. I haven't been hung over in five That's years, amazing. which I think is better than not being drunk for five years. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I've, I haven't felt that sickness and that's, that's what I feel really grateful for. I stopped drinking. Like, I think I'm now like my fifth week at a really bad oh, experience. Yeah. It was really gnarly. Yeah. And hurt somebody that cared i cared the most about and i was yeah. like i can't do this like i'm really not somebody i enjoy when i drink yeah and you know my dad is like like 28 years sober now wow replaced booze with like the gym and diet coke yeah yeah yeah. literally um and yeah it's i had to yeah i'm five years of oh, five weeks in jesus christ but i'm still going out normally and i'm not feeling tempted but i'm afraid that it's gonna start creeping in well, are you, are you kind of planning on like holding this down for, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing too. I, that's, that's actually not the question to ask because so much of it is one day at a time. Like yeah. it was not that I, I, if I were to th- like when I started, if I were to think now I need to be sober for the rest of my life, that's such an overwhelming undertaking. Um, but I mean, do, like, did, did you notice the shifts early on because I feel like pretty early on you kind of start feeling um there there is this there the, like some of that darkness is already removed in a way oh yeah yeah well so so I, I drank really late in life too like mm-hmm. by late I mean like I didn't drink until my 21st birthday I didn't have a sip of alcohol wow. before then and I was always the DD taking care of friends and I really again it's not like the issue is like I just over drink. The mm-hmm. issue is that I, not that I drink every day. It's that when I do drink, I, I lose count of how much I've had. Yeah. And then I turn into somebody I don't like. Right. And then it's me turning into somebody I don't like and then hurting those around me that really fucks me up. Yeah. And doing that twice a week or once a week even, you know, maybe even three times is a fucking problem. And then some weeks it'd be four times a week. Right, right. You know, of getting drunk. And that's like, that is not, not appropriate, not right. And also like, again, hurting those around me. So the second I let go. I, I, I feel better a hundred percent, but I don't know. I am like socially tempted. Like just being honest, like yeah. I'm grabbing dinner tonight with Brittany Broski and Love. she's like, let's get drinks and talk shit on people. <laughs> That's my favorite fucking thing to do. Of course. I would love to get cocktails and talk shit on people. Yeah. Like I don't necessarily think I wanted to, you know, you know what I mean? Like I'm like, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing hard. that I think a lot of people, uh, that, separates a lot of people is like if bad things continue to happen to you or if you do bad things to other people while you're under the influence like that's usually a good indicator to slow down or to stop and I think a lot of people with an addict mindset want to once those bad things start happening but they can't because you have this thing in your head that just makes you continue going but to be able to stop after okay I'm realizing there are they're like, I, I'm doing the same thing and I'm getting the same result. So let me change the thing that I'm doing um, to get a different result. I think that's where so much of the power lies and being able to do that like is a huge first step in general. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Are you actually a bottom or do you just think it's socially cool to be a bottom right now? <laughs> like, what a shift. <laughs> we just went from talking about, is it socially cool to be a bottom? <laughs> I feel like I, I'm getting that, like a heavy verse energy from you, but I think that's because I, that's what I bring in a podcast room. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what I bring to my regular life is I'm, I'm, I, I would actually say probably like throughout the day, I have very dominant energy. I don't want to continue having that all the time. Mm. I am not a bottom because it gives me social currency. Okay. I am because I enjoy it. Okay. I'm just here just trying to <laughs> just sniff out the real ones from the fake ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just doing a service for us all. Of course. I think it's really important um, to have visibility in that way. And I'm really <laughs> glad to kind of champion the the charge. I mean, you have a chain. I saw Megan got you a chain that says bottom. She did. She did. I don't really wear it because I feel like kind of dis- just the, the large display of that maybe doesn't need to happen. But mm. I feel like people kind of know at this point. What yeah, it's, <laughs> it's also hard to be dominant and then wear that, right? Right. What yeah. if two bottoms? hit it off i think it it gets tough that actually happened to me um Mm. (laughs) not clickbait uh (laughs) so i um i uh, but one of the guys that i dated like after my last relationship uh we were going it was going well and then it was getting to that point of like us hooking up and um i was real like i was like why doesn't he want this to happen and i've been very forward very early on about like yeah that's kind of what i enjoy and um I then we had a conversation and he was like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm that same. 
And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. And then yeah, but nobody's like down to like, I don't know, like color a little bit outside of your lines. Yeah. No, I mean, and, and we are, and we did, but it ends up mm. just being like, if that is your main preference, it's really hard to just like get past that and feel. Yeah, I get it. You know, you know. Um, <laughs> like and and it's it's, it's yeah. It, I think, but I think a lot of the time too, there's like a certain, um, like a lot of people have kind of sometimes. This it's a it's a little bit of a stereotype. So I'm I'm this I'm being very generalized because this is not true for everyone. But a lot of people have the personality of what they also tend to be uh-huh. in the bedroom, and so sometimes you tend to just like gravitate towards a person who seems to be like the kind of person you're trying to match up with. But what went wrong here? He had some top energy. Mm. He did. He did. I was very surprised. What is top energy? Um, I mean, I can. There's there's a couple different types of tops. Yeah, I mean, there's, dominant, selfish. There's also soft tops, uh, which are wonderful. Where are they? Um, it's a soft top. What the fuck are they? It's like a it's like a very vulnerable emotional <laughs> top, <laughs> because a lot of the time, I think, uh, I think the stereotype can be that uh, tops have the the type of. Uh, the, this the, a slight sense of that toxic masculinity. It's like that, soft. Like, you can get soft and selfish, though. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. They exist. So there's a lot. Um, yeah, I don't really know how to. Wow, we God, we've covered a lot. This has really gone to a, a, a new level of of things. Aren't you glad um, you came? I'm so. I haven't yet, but I will. <laughs> You getting, I mean, like, do you want us to look in your eyes or turn around? <laughs> Which would you prefer? <laughs> um, th- uh, it's both work okay. for sure. <laughs> no, I'm okay. <laughs> what makes you the most comfortable, though? What makes me the most comfortable? I mean, in ju- the bedroom. I mean, no, no, that's not really the question. We're talking about in general. Yeah. Well, no, I was, I was, I was like, what, are, yeah, what kind of? Yeah, like where? What? What? Uh, what avenue are we going down now? Mm, I mean, I was going to talk about your heels and your maid costume. Oh. Uh, that I actually wasn't like very that's kind of a new development in my life. I wasn't very comfortable doing uh expressing like the feminine side of me because I grew up going to an all boys school um for middle school and the very start of high school. And so feeling that side of me, even though I went to a different school like halfway through high school and was it hard to be gay though college? in all yes. boys school? Yeah. I was the only out kid. I came out at the end of seventh grade too, so wow. I was really young. Um and I was the only out kid and it was fine for like a little bit, but then, I mean, guys at that age in general are like horrible to each other. Jesus guys and girls, like everyone is just horrible because you're hormonal, you're going through puberty. It's like this crazy time. And so, uh, I just became like the target for most of that anger. And it wasn't like, there wasn't a lot of physical violence, but there was a lot of, I, I felt cut out event- after doing that from all of the friends that I had made as, as a kid. And I remember early on freshman year I would go to my friend's house who she she would drive us to school and I remember like second week of school in September I like went over and I just started breaking down before we drove there because I was like I cannot keep going to the school like this this feels I I don't feel like I I can I I should even be there at that time um especially because and and that's when I was just embracing this gay side of myself I wasn't like I wasn't even, I wore Doc Martens once and they, and people made fun of me for wearing heels, which is crazy. I, we all know yeah. a Doc Martin. That's I'm like wearing them right now. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and I got, I got made fun. Like so many people made fun of me, uh, that day. And w- there was one substitute teacher who I remember like comp, he was an older guy and he complimented me on my docs. And he was like, I used to wear those all the time growing up. And I was like, thank you. I needed that because I was, I was so uncomfortable with myself. Um, and so I hadn't even played in, in, with that side of myself and, and I was still getting, uh, all of that negative attention. So, um, the, the heels, the maid outfit, all of those things have been definitely a, a new, uh, a more recent development in my life that I've started embracing more. Freeing? so freeing it feels great um and it also like i think getting positive validation Mm. for it while you we shouldn't rely on validation for so many things in my life but getting that from the internet was very helpful for uh, giving myself more permission to be able to do that um because i like i the first time i did it was Candace Owens got really like pissed at Harry Styles for wearing a dress so I stitched her saying like men shouldn't wear dresses and then I walked like to a Harry Styles song in slow motion wearing a wearing that maid outfit 
And that was the first time I had ever put that on and like made it a thing. And, uh, people, the, there was so much like positive affirmation that came from it that I really started feeling good about doing stuff like that. But isn't there a line between positive affirmation and being sexualized? Probably. Yes. A hundred percent. I think that line is hard to personally delineate between the two because I see them I, I like there, there are times at which I see them where I could be comfortable to be sexualized in that moment. And I'm like, yeah, like you should think this is hot and this is great. But then on a, on another time maybe, or, or by, by a person who I'm, I'm not trying, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to always, uh, find the, the separation between the two personally. Um, I think because I, I have put myself out in that way that I'm like, this, this is, I I I'm I also try to not read all of the comments so I'm not sure everything that the people are saying about it but yeah there is a line between the two How do you meet men besides baristas and shit Um most of the time it, it's DMs it's through through Instagram So you're just like looking at your like non-general your like hidden fucking inbox No not really I, and it's not it's not that constant but the, the a few That's of the, a lie uh, I'm, I mean yeah, it has I to would be say, somewhat consistent that you're getting DMs from people now. I mean, oh, oh, when it when I'm getting, uh, I mean, it's it's tough because I don't. There, there's there's plenty of people that um in in the DMs that I'm I'm not that it's 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 not going to line up with or something like that. I, I people are not. I, I'm not getting the the kind of attention that I feel like uh, some people maybe have I don't know it's so weird to also say that because I'm like now it sounds like I'm saying like I know I should be getting a lot of attention <laughs> um but a lot of people are like wow like now that you have this platform and you're single like it's probably you're probably fighting the boys off no 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 no, no. no some people could be afraid yes and and I think it's also like I think there's there's this kind of sense that if people are thinking that then people are like why am I why would I reach out in the first place like he's not gonna see it I will uh, so just, you know, <laughs> if you want to say anything, um, but I, th a lot of my, a lot of the dates have been through Instagram or, um, I, or like, come on, or I, this most recent guy I've dated, I came from Raya. Okay. Yeah. Private yeah. jet guy? No, 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 no. That was, that was at, uh, the, the, that was in fashion week. Mm. Um, no, uh, has been from Raya. Um. For the most part, I mean, I mean, I'm not like uh, over the past year. I I did that dating wrapped, and there were a lot of like fun dates that I went on. But I mean, I, I while I've tried dating around, it hasn't been to the point of being like I am like a now this serial dater. Like I think I've I think I've started going into them where I'm like, if this isn't the if if this doesn't work out in the way that I want it to, I'll be okay. I'm getting very comfortable being alone in a good way, and also in the way of like I hope I, I I'm trying not to get to that place where I'm not. I'm not looking at looking for that at all, but, um, yeah, no, it's, it's a d d dating is, it's very interesting doing it in, in this new kind of like era that I'm in. Oh yeah. I think it's to be really challenging. Yeah, it definitely is because sometimes you don't know, or I'm, I'm not sure like maybe they like me, but they hate my content. And then I'm like, well, then maybe you don't actually like me in that way. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes f showing someone my content feel, feels very vulnerable. Or if someone's also doing the same thing that I'm doing, are they just kind of trying to link themselves with me? Cause it would be like a good look for the both of us. And, and so I think there's, uh, it's, it's, there's so many more layers that come to dating, which is all, there are already so many layers that come to dating in your twenties or when, like, however old you are. Oh my God. Fuck yeah. And those are just like the deeper ones. It could be as yes. shallow as like being annoyed when you leave the house and go to a target and people yeah. are coming up to you. I remember I, I went on a, um, a date or a few dates with a guy and, um, he it ended up really not being great. He was very non-communicative and all of that stuff. But I mean, the dates we actually went on were good. And he was, he said like, I really like you and I'm really liking what's going on. Mm. And then, uh, I talked to one of my, one of my friends exes, like was friends with him. And I, I was talking to that friend and he was like, Oh yeah, this guy, uh, my ex asked this guy, uh, about your dates and he just said that he was just getting help with TikTok, that they weren't dates. And I was like, what? What is what? If he was getting help with TikTok, we would have like, 
wouldn't oh. we have done a video together? Like I was, I was trying to think of the logistics of it. I was like, w wait, wouldn't we have done a video? Like, wouldn't his TikToks be good? Um, wouldn't we have been able to like, wouldn't there, I was trying to think of all these things and I was like, I, so now I have to go back on and rethink Ugh. all of those interactions. Ugh. Um, and so I, I remember hearing that and just being like, and then of course, when I pulled away, then he started sliding mm -hmm. in all the time and was like, Hey, like one, wait, I want to see you all of these things. And I was Ew. like, no, I already, I know, I know what you're about. That's you should have like invoiced him. I should have my consulting fee. Mm -hmm. Would which you, I you never get back is. together? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's a very, very quick answer. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, um, I, we're, we're friends at this point. Um, and which is, which is great. I think there was a period of time where we were not, um, and you know, we've never gone to the point of like really, uh, like feeling like I'm, he's my enemy, but mm -hmm. that chapter is, is definitely closed. Um, and that's okay. And it lives online in a beautiful way. And I'm really glad <laughs> that there's this, that there's this kind of like video diary of our really good time together. Um, and when it started not going as good, there weren't as many videos of that. And so I'm really glad that that period of time in my life happened and I'm so grateful for it. And that period of time is not meant to happen again. But what do you learn from that relationship that you're taking with you as you try to find love again? I think a, 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 definitely a lot of things. I, I think putting myself first um, matters the most to me because when we first met, um, I was just so unbelievably willing to do whatever it would take to um, make him happy and, and want to make this relationship be good that I sacrificed so much of myself and that's, and that's not to his um, like, that's the, you know, T to his credit, he was just going through a relationship with someone who was willing to do whatever for him. Um, and so that's not like something that I think is his downfall, but I, uh, sacrificed a lot of myself to, con to, to make sure this relationship continued working. I don't think I, 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 I know I don't want to do that anymore. I think I know there's a sense of putting another person and compromising and being able to do that in a relationship is very important, but making sure you are remaining, uh, priority to yourself is oh, yeah. always the most important thing you remaining priority you remaining true to yourself but also you know being with somebody who brings the best out in you and hopefully that you do the same to them right yes absolutely um there's a way to not lose yourself in a relationship but gain new parts of yourself yeah and and i think i'm i'm not in a rush to make sure that happens with another person because I think after that relationship, there was a lot of work I needed to do and just like figuring out who I was again on my own. Um, especially because I had gotten in that relationship and then I was trying to figure out who I was now with this platform with another person at the same time. And so everything, every idea I had about myself had really like just gotten very mixed up in my own head. So this past year has been a lot of just like spending time with myself and seeing how I feel about that healthy but also like i get it like your value is wrapped up in another person to a certain degree yeah it's it's wrapped up in another person it's wrapped up in an app it's it's wrapped up in how well you're doing or something like that and so trying to refine the value and just like myself at a base level i think was the most important thing for me over the past year what does megan having a hit prove to you that she's really talented i think a lot of people um have <laughs> There's, I'm, I'm really grateful that a lot of people are like, you really helped out with that. And, and I, and I did, and it was a really fun thing for us to do together, but I, I will always attribute it to the fact that I am, I am a, a fan first. I think she's such an amazing songwriter. She's truly like producing and sound engineering so much of this stuff herself with a lot of help as well. She's and there are genius. other producers, but she is doing so much of that herself. And it is so unbelievable to watch because I know her as this like quirky fun girl who's just like ready to talk about an anal fisher on TikTok but then <laughs> she goes into the studio and she is hearing things that I have no idea like that I my ears could never hear she's putting things together she's able to um create a literally write and create a song in less than a day and I think it's just incredible work so I think what it says to me is that like yes I maybe know how to like roll out a song on TikTok or, or, or I can help figure it out but if the song is good it's going to do the work itself and I think people really love that song and I think people are going to like the other things she starts putting out because I, I truly just think she I mean she's like an artist at heart what do you add to a meeting or to a studio that nobody else can bring? 
I, I, I would be really, um, I, it's, it's tough for me to really say that I add something that no one else would bring. I think a lot of people can, can bring some of the things that I do and maybe just haven't put themselves in the position to do so. I think I've, I've, um, latched onto certain opportunities to, to make sure I'm able to be in those rooms to do it. But I think, I think I bring this understanding of, of, social media in a way, but also an understanding of the, this sounds very deep, but an understanding of the human experience because of the certain things that I've been through that I know I've, I've, I've thought through, um, what it's like being a consumer, what it's like being the creator. And then what it's like, like being the artist of the things that, um, I, I have a, I have an understanding of how it's going to work when it, 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 when it goes onto social media or when people are starting to consume or connect with it. And I think a lot of other people have that too. They just maybe don't voice it or have the language to kind of put themselves in that exact position. But, um, I don't think I'm, I don't think I do it better than, um, like everyone else. Like I, I don't walk into the room and think like, I'm the reason your life is going to change or I'm the reason like we're going to make this, all of that. I'm just like, let's do this together and let's figure out a way that um, we can find the best potential for whatever you're trying to put out or for you in general. Before I ever worked with Megan, I was thinking like, um, w- what uh, if I, if I could ever be connected to if I could just have control of any of these celebrity social medias, I would be able to blow them up in the best way because they're all so talented, but they just don't know how to use the app in the way that they should. Chris, this is why people think you're running the pleasing account. But you are. Oh, I don't know. Bullshit. <laughs> Bull fucking shit. <laughs> Everything bullshit. you're saying is like it all no, makes bullshit. sense. Wait, that's does why it? people no that's bullshit i know you're lying you can admit it here it. you just you <laughs> cried here today you're gonna sit there and you're gonna lie to me teary <laughs> oh get the fuck you're gonna lie about that too okay how many things are you gonna lie about i'm today, not gonna Chris? lie about anything to you um that's i guess that would make sense why people would think no, that. we see your kitchen chris <laughs> I, don't know, I which yeah right <laughs> what i don't know pleasing is <laughs> You tell me. <laughs> You're the expert. You have the computer. You should just type away. And I don't. What was true today? What is what is the truth? I don't know. I don't know anymore. Everything is the truth. I haven't said an answer. Isn't it crazy that you do so many things with your life in such a short amount of time? People are like, he's got to be lying. None of this can all be like. That people, is pretty crazy. People look at your life like it's a giant lie. Like, how is this kid actually doing everything he's doing? Yeah, but well, I actually think it, it all makes sense. Does it? <laughs> yeah, I can easily. If I'm a sensible human being, yeah, I, I'm a. Harry fan you are who's aware of the ecosystem that's created over there right which they all are like everybody knows that there is no fan out there right like a Harry Styles fan yes it's in true. terms of their level of dedication in terms of the years that they've committed to following these boys understanding how they operate understanding the people around them I mean like honestly if there's anybody I can our best researcher on our team is is one of the people who started the first ever One Direction uh, like follow account. account. Wow. She's Twitter. fucking amazing. Wow, that's She's incredible. Incredible. So you, don't fucking bullshit me. <laughs> I have no okay? idea what you're talking about. You lie like a rug. I don't. <laughs> it's okay if you are if you do nail polish TikToks. So um, I do think I, there, are, there are frequently things uh, that people <laughs> will say um, okay. where they'll think I'm running things that I'm not at this point. Like I think people mm. people now have taken it to a level of being like, this Chris Olsen is definitely behind this and I'll see it in my mentions and I'm like, Oh no. But like, I I'm flattered that people think I really am doing like doing this at a level that's like possibly inhuman. Mm -hmm. I am doing a lot for sure. Like I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place and I try to have my hands in so many different buckets. Is that the phrase? I don't know, but um, I am doing a lot, but I'm not doing it to a point where I'm literally inhuman or, or making, or, or making it happen. And I do have help with a lot of the things that I'm doing. Like, it's not just all me. I don't think you're doing that. Much. I mean, I think you're doing a lot. You're no offense. Your, I think, I think, you're, I think you're the right amount of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not doing it to a point where I'm like, I'm the hardest you, worker on this planet. Are you trying to make the case that you can't be pleasing because you're just too busy? I, <laughs> I I'm I am very busy, but I'm not saying I'm not saying I am the hardest worker on the planet, and I'm doing more than all of you. And this isn't like a, a, a I'm I'm doing I'm in this position because I work harder than all of you. It's like a things have just happened in a certain way, and I'm doing a lot. But I, yeah, I'm I'm still, but I'm surviving. 
I'm going to ask you a question about the Grammys. When you go to an event like that, are you like, okay, what can I film here that's going to go viral? Are you there just to enjoy yourself? Or when you, when, when you went to the Grammys, you're like, okay, there's Harry Styles and Taylor Swift. Yeah. Let me keep my eyes on them. Yeah, no, it's it's more like I, I'm going under the sense that I know there will be moments that I can get good content out of. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, you're usually invited, whether it's by the Recording Academy themselves or by like a brand that has been given a lot of tickets um, or like by a network or something, you're invited and you're in heavily encouraged to make content you're not required but if you don't who knows if they're going to have room for you on the next event or something like that and so i go under the guise of being like i know there's going to be a lot of good opportunity to make content but i'm not going planning out like okay i know what like i i I know when I see this person, I'm going to need to, I know when I see Harry, I'm, I'm going to likely make a video about that because like, why wouldn't I? Yeah. Harry, I'd like, I'm, I'm, I die for him. He's amazing. But when Harry and, or when Taylor was dancing to Harry, that was a moment where I was like, oh shit, like this is important. Mm -hmm. This isn't, I don't think I see a camera on Taylor and I need to show people that this is happening. Um, and then it got to the point where Harry and Taylor were talking and my date Dylan was like, uh, Chris, get that. Like I wasn't even looking at them and she was like, you need to film that. Like you need to get that. And so like people kind of know that uh, that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to make. Um, but it's, it, there's, there's nothing that's too calculated mm -hmm. about it. Like when I was there, I was just like kind of posting in the moment, like making this stuff as I go. Um, so I, I, I'm like, I just try to remain like, I just try to keep my eyes peeled for the moment to get, to make it happen. Where were you? What were you doing when you realized flying with a cup of coffee to somebody was a good idea? Well, like when I first had the idea for it ever, yeah. I think I, I, the truth, I'm, cause I tell you the truth, right? And so the truth <laughs> is, um, that, <laughs> that I had, I had already had, I, I was with Ian at the time. I'd already had a trip planned to New York and we were at our apartment in LA and I had seen a girl tell her parent she was going to hang out with a friend and then flew like to another state to hang out with a friend. And I had already like coffee. I've, I've always been a, a coffee person, like whether it was through my content or just me in life. And so I thought like, okay, I'm going to New York. Is there like, what if I did um, me like going to get coffee um, while he's here so I flew and I I just kind of hoped that it would be a good idea and I had no idea because that's how so many of these series starts like therapy or or anything like that I was like maybe people will like this but who knows if they will and so I did it ended up getting a lot of views and then I was like I guess I'll like kind of keep going with this I'll see if it can continue being a thing and I started doing it with Ian and then with my dad and then it kind of like started dying down until I did it with Megan and then it took a life of its own and was like and now it's happening to other famous people and like that's becoming a thing and and it's just had like different waves of life throughout the time but I think I, I I'm able to know when something's a good idea usually when it ends up performing well <laughs> Sometimes, though, if it doesn't perform well and I still think it's a good idea, I don't drop it just because maybe something didn't perform well. Like I remember when I first did a singing video, it did okay. And the second one did really well. And then the third one did horribly. And I had a breakdown. I started crying because I was like, and I called my friend and I was like, I'm, I, I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm so embarrassing. She was like, that, like, th if, if one of them had gone well, that doesn't mean people suddenly think you're a bad singer. That just means this is TikTok and the algorithm like changes up. Yeah. And so I think I, I think um, I've tried to remove myself from a consistently trying to just think something's a good idea because it got the validation of yeah. other people. Your worth and value can't be tied up in data and like no. you can't. It, it, I'm assuming that for a while you've made a lot of content for other people as opposed to you. Yes, 100%. I would say like the like the th along the line i don't know no there's still a mix of the two i make content for myself and i make stuff that i really enjoy i but think you sing for you absolutely absolutely and someone asked me earlier today if i ever wanted to like do music myself and i'm like i don't know if i really do like i think right now singing and music for me lives in this place of truly just being fun and something that i enjoy and that's not something that's become work and I don't know if I would ever want to make that shift to be something that's now something I really need to rely on for uh, work or that I need to put so much more energy into. It's it's become something that's fun and that I really have a lot of love with, a uh, love for. So you're completely right about that. Keep that like 
safe and secure until yes, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, and it, and it is, I think it is, it, it, it has remained at that level. And I, I don't think that's kind of going away anytime soon. So what's success to you today? What is success? How do you define today? it? Yeah. What is it in your life? But personal happiness. I think like I, I th- that's such a, it's such kind of an annoying answer, but I think I've, I've realized in, in throughout all the different waves that I've had is that no level of validation that I get externally will ever truly like fulfill me internally feeling like I'm proud of myself and feeling happy for me and, and being happy with the people that I have around me is the only thing that really ends up fulfilling that part of me that was emotional before about just wanting to feel proud of myself or having someone feel proud about me, um, for me, of well, me. That's it. I don't know if it matters, but I am proud of you, Chris Olson. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank both of you. You should be proud of you too. I do. I think this conversation actually <laughs> was slightly healing. It made me feel, it, I do feel better about it. I, I just think I haven't voiced that, um, because I don't know if I knew that that was it for, for a long time. I just, I feel hurt that nobody's told you that they're proud of you because there's so much to be proud of. I think, and, and I think people have, and I, I don't want to discredit it, it anyway. I think it's, I think it's me. I think it's internally. I feel that way. And it, once I am able to accept that about myself, then, then I, then, then the shift happens. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure my, People in my life, close people in my life would be heartbroken to hear that I feel like people aren't proud of me. And it's not a them thing. I'm sure they have said it to me. And and, and I know a lot of them have. It's this, it's, it's all up here. Well, and for the sake of devil's advocate, you know, some people may not express verbally pride, but show it through action. Right. You know? Absolutely. Um, Yeah. But really, there's nothing like somebody looking you in the eyes and telling you that they're proud of you. Yes. Yeah. It like I I do feel like um there's there's always that slight search for that feeling. Well, I hope you find it. Thank you. And I thank you for giving us time today. Flight fuel is your coffee. Flight fuel is my coffee. You should check it out. Um, it's really good. I've I've enjoyed. I know we didn't. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's really great. good. I mean, it's good coffee. It's good stuff. Yeah. I mean, is there I've, pressure because you know Emma at, like Emma Chamberlain is coffee. People have coffee. No, I'm not. My plan is not. I'm not trying to compete with anyone. I mm. I I want every all of these coffee brands to thrive. Um, and I would also <laughs> like mine to be one of those as well. But I I mean, it took like a year to develop. Like this wasn't kind of this off the cuff. Like I'm just gonna create a coffee brand. The coffee bit that I've been doing on TikTok has been going on for like two years now. So about a year ago, I was like, I want to kind of make something more out of this. Um, And so it took a year to develop with creative and like trying all the different kinds of blends that my, the partners that we worked with were um, sending me. So you're like, where do you go? Who do you go to when you want to make a coffee brand? It ended up becoming like I, we worked with this brand that proposition themselves they were like if this would ever be something that you're interested in i was like as a matter of fact i've already been thinking about it (laughs) um and so we they have been very helpful in helping with uh just how how you begin because it Mm -hmm. is a really like creating a business incredibly daunting could never do it myself need all of the help in the world um so to be able to kind of start working with them in that way i think has been amazing um but also having a lot of like a lot of it come from me, I think was really important as well. So yeah, that's, that's how it, that's how it kind of started. But again, yeah. And, and, and that was kind of my worry was that people would be like, uh, you know, but like when, when, an, when another uh, celebrity or influencer creates a makeup line or something, they're like, they're coming for blank or they're coming for that. I never want to like, my goal is never to think that people think I'm c- trying to come for one of the other brands or that Emma is the only other person in the coffee space in the influencer space. So they're like, Oh, he's trying to take her down. Which he's not, by the way, like there's a couple other people too. Right. 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 But I like, I I know a lot of the comments when I initially started doing that, were like coming for Emma. No, been an Emma fan for so much of my life. And I I want Chamberlain coffee to continue to thrive. I love Chamberlain coffee. I think there's room for a lot of people. Um, And so that's kind of my goal with this. Is that the future of the creator economy in your humble opinion? You're going to build business. You're not just going to endorse business. Yeah, I think I, I, I think so. I know there are a lot of people who have no desire to do that, to build their own business. I think the creator economy is really starts to live in what each individual creator wants for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's kind of the, the privilege of all of this is you can kind of tailor your own career career to your 
what you want. Um, but I do think a, a lot of it, 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 it will fluctuate between um, creators running the businesses that they are promoting and creators continuing to help out other businesses that will continue to fund them. Do you see yourself making videos 50 years from now? No. And really? I hope I'm not. Wow. I, I hope I'm still connecting with my audience in a way or connecting with people in a way that feels like I'm still close to them. But making videos in the way that I do, I don't think for anyone is really sustainable at that level. And we always see people who are in any any type of entertainment form kind of shift the way they're doing things after a few years. Like no one remains doing the exact same thing forever. And if you do, or, or I feel like if I were, then I wouldn't be evolving as a person. And I, I hope to evolve as a person and see and do something different. What do you think in Pink Hat? Well, we got to wrap it up. But the one question I had is, um, <clears throat> did every coffee delivery make it to TikTok or did some have to be scrapped or was there any that like sucked and you're like, this is not good? Everyone has made them. Everyone has made it so far. There are a few I'm sitting on that I haven't been able to post yet. Um, I can't not tell you. <laughs> Why? Is it just like a proof? I mean, you'll see it eventually. Um, but He's I, not on TikTok. Oh, you're not? No, no, no. no. When, when the pandemic so, hit. Was, he had no, no. idea. Is the, that, you've, you've been Googling me this whole time. Is that what's going little on? Little by yeah, little. Great. <laughs> um, so no, when the pandemic hit, everyone got addicted to TikTok. I'm like, I'm just going to avoid this entire thing and not get addicted to it. And I've just never touched it. Wow. No, dude, our show showed up like two years late to TikTok. And only after there was like a billion user generated content views on our shit. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're late to that fucking party by like how long? A year and a half? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you yeah, have like you, you're pretty strong on a lot of other platforms. So I no, think I mean, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, um, we're, we're, we're places. Yeah, for we're, sure. We're doing fine. You are. You are. Chris well, Olson's here. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> this has been great. Are you I've lying? gone through every single, no, I'm not. I've gone through every single emotion, I think, except for anger. I was never anger, angry at either of you. Oh, that makes you so happy. Yeah. Well, you, that well, what can I, you do to piss him off? Well, I hope that doesn't change on your way out. <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> if you want to buy flight fuel, you can. We're going to put a link in the description below. Yes, please. Uh, check it out. You really should be available on the GoPuff. I would love to. Please, yeah. Can you connect me with them? I would love to. Connect All right, let's you. do it. GoPuff sounds really amazing. Yeah. Um, and I can't wait to order it tonight. What code are you going to use? Zach10. When you're checking out. For 10% off. Well, $10 off your first $10 two orders. $10 off my first two orders is actually what I meant to say. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. But really, buy Flight Fuel, try it out. Uh, yeah, Chris Olsen, please. this is nice. This was great. Thank you for having me. You can come back if you want some time. I would love to come back every day. I mean, that's emotionally probably taxing for you. Yeah, yeah. right. And, right. And, and also, I don't know if, like, you know, I, you know, you're a cool guy, but, but that's a there's lot. There's only so much to say. Right, right. Also, quickly, by the way, I'm not on TikTok, but I, like, you're everywhere. You're not just TikTok anymore. Oh. So I see your shit everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Are you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram, okay. but, like, you make e news, you make, you make everything. You're oh, trending sure. all the time. So you're more than a TikTok. I'm not even, stuff. Yeah. Well, the last time I trended was the first night I met you was for daddy. The, the daddy sign that yeah. was on, on Twitter. Um, you're just a star now, not wow. a TikTok star. Well, thank you. And I'm so thank proud you. of you. Thank you. <laughs> Starts sobbing. <laughs> Cut the cameras. <laughs> Chris Olsen, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.